you come into this gallery and you see all these great paintings. They're full of color, they're full of vitality, they're full of that kind of raw energy that John's always had at his fingertips. But I think these new paintings, they're more celebratory. I mean, they still tackle these great themes, life, death, or you know, the passing of time. But they seem to celebrate life rather than uh, brood. It's the best of them all. When you look down from the balcony over the whole mass of paintings, it's like looking up over a huge bed of flowers because the colour's so rich. And then, of course, you look at the iconography and images come and go. But compared with the work ten years ago, this is someday not look, looking at the dark side of the moon, but looking at the bright side. This is this one, Odyssey, I called it. And it's really like the voyage through my life. And it's uh, with all the drama and changes I've had. But it's also related to the Odyssey, you know. I can see it's, that. it's this universal people's voyage from life into death and then tip, well, you know, tipping into the that. nether world, which is after life. What I've been saying, in questions. a sense, is you're painting about your own experiences. You know, it's autobiographical, but yet it's much bigger than that because it's almost like a Greek drama. And there's the hint of that in the title. Huh? Yeah. You know, it's not just you, there's a whole journey, a voyage, uh, lots yeah. of other characters yeah. as well. So I think that takes it way beyond any kind of little self-obsession on behalf of the artist. I think that's one of the hallmarks of your achievement. The most significant thing about this exhibition is the fact that it looks very seriously at his whole printed, his graphic output um, over the last 25 years. No one's uh, ever attempted this before. His art has developed tremendously and it reflects his, you know, his uh, dramatic life in a way. But there is a continuity of imagery, and the prints, having the prints there, going right back over 25 years, allows people to see the way his ideas have evolved without actually doing a sort of you know, a retrospective. You can create a line with etching which has got more strength than any other drawn line. And so, really, you're seeing the distillation of John's skill as a draftsman in the etchings. His own fluency is matched by the, the way in which a needle over copper moves. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a natural sympathetic relationship between the artist and the, the print medium. I was at a concert yesterday of Yo-Yo Ma playing his cello and he just started and it was just like with the etching needle and he just sat there and it was just pure talent and he just it flowed, it just flowed like a river, just fabulous. Just sat back and just played. And I think what can happen with the etching, you know, if you hit a very good day, if you're on top form, it just is like that, you just, it just flows. It kind of takes care of itself, like him with his bow. Excitement mount, here we go. This is always the period of anticipation that gets the, your nerves jangling. Right. This is it. A great moment now. Wanton Bride. The, the letters are the right way around. <laughs> it's a beauty. Oh, good, good. I think with the Old Man and the Sea series, really, that was maybe once in a lifetime event. I was so ill, I was dying myself. And uh, like, the, <laughs> like the fish in the novella by Hemingway, I reread the book and I thought about all of my own imagery related to life and death. In fact, I thought maybe this might be the last thing I would ever do. I was fading away. I was physically, you know, it was like the fish. I was losing pounds and adding up the stones by the month, you know, and while I was doing this. So it was an incredible thing. And I hope that this anguish I was feeling inside and this despair, I hope some of that actually was coming across in the plates. 
and I think that's why they're so poignant as a, a series. Um, and, I, and perhaps they are the best it prints I've ever done, or maybe even likely to do. I think it's maybe the difference between, say, a, a great black and white photograph and a, a colour photograph. You know, there's a lot gets, <laughs> a lot of things get in the road. I think when you bring colour into play, um, but once you take colour away and reveal that image in all its kind of starkness, then you have something which, um, you know, it, it's, it, it speaks a different kind of emotional language. We must always remember the common ground is the one word, drawing. Because you can't do etchings if you can't draw. You, 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 you can't do anything if you can't draw, in my view. So the, the underlying thing with all the work is the drawing. And that's the rock on which you build. The prints, in a sense, interweave with the paintings. Some of those incredible birds, animals, etc. But perhaps they first began in paintings. And then the puffins, the owls, the whole iconography of, <laughs> of, of the north, it emerges in a different way in the prints. So there's this kind of um, interplay between the prints and the paintings, a very kind of fruitful interplay in my opinion. <laughs>